guys, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Preston Ruth. I just got done running track at Tennessee, and I recently started posting content on social media and YouTube to help college and high school runners as well as those looking to begin their running journey. Last week I did a day in my life vlog of training, eating, school, and content, and this week I'm gonna be talking about how to run a faster 800. The 800 was my main event at Tennessee. I ended up running 152 as my fastest time. I'm by no means an elite mid-distance runner, but my time at Tennessee showed me what it takes to run a fast 800 and how to improve over time. I got to college and I had three mid-distance coaches in four years. The cool thing about this was it gave me a look into both sides of training for the 800. So you can approach it from the strength or speed side. The strength side, which taps into more of the aerobic system, you're doing high mileage, you're racing a little bit more conservatively where you're running even both laps or where both your splits for your first and second lap are equal, as well as the speed side where you're doing hard, fast lactic sessions that tap into that anaerobic system. You're doing a lot of speed and power in the weight room. You're going out hard in races where you're negative splitting by two, three, four seconds where your first lap goes out faster than your second. And you're training that speed endurance more like a 400 meter runner. Both these systems work, they both have success. And I'm mainly making this video because being a good 800 meter runner is extremely challenging. And while I had some growth at Tennessee, I believe these tips would have helped me maximize my racing. So here's some tips to run a faster 800. First, from a training perspective, you have to have a consistent training program. And what does a good training program consist of? For an 800 meter runner, the first thing is gonna be base mileage. So even though this is a speed sprint event, you still need that base mileage to build that aerobic system to give you the strength to actually carry that speed over two laps. And then the next thing is gonna be recovery days. So the 800 is high intensity training. You need to recover as hard as you work out. For all my high school runners that don't have access to cold tubs and to Normatec boots, really focus on rolling out, stretching, sleeping well, on eating what you need to eat. Those little things are gonna help you from getting hurt and speeding up your recovery. As well, you need to have race simulation workouts. So you need to have hard, lactic workouts that are gonna give you that 800 meter feel that's gonna feel like the race. That's what helped me grow physically and mentally as an 800 meter runner. Now, tips from the mental perspective. The biggest skill or trait that I would say 800 meter runners need to have from a mental perspective is going to be confidence. You have to believe you belong there. And this comes from confidence and training, right? So consistent training over time, seeing those results is gonna build confidence. It comes from yourself. That self-confidence comes through positive self-talk. That's why I harp on that so much. I started that my sophomore year, but it's really telling yourself that you're gonna go run that race. It's speaking into existence that, that PR race. Finally, confidence from your coach. Not every coach does this, but good coaches know how to instill confidence and belief into their athletes. And the second trait to have is this nothing to lose, no fear mindset, where you're walking into races and you're not worried about the result or the pain or how it might play out. You just go out and compete. And now for the racing tips. This is by far the hardest part. Every 800 plays out differently. It's like a game of chess. You wanna treat the 800 like a sprint event more than a distance event. This will help you approach the race better. That first lap, the biggest key with this first lap is getting out hard, harder than what you think. It's almost like you're getting out for a 400. A huge mistake I see 800 meter runners make is going out too conservatively, you get boxed in, and I've had a lot of bad races from getting out too slow. So you wanna get out hard and get in a good position. That back is when you settle in. So at this point, the whole first lap, you wanna think about getting in good position, about not wasting energy, so not passing people or being in lane two and not losing momentum. My best races came when I was able to find that position early and stay there for the whole first lap. And just because you're being conservative does not mean this will be comfortable. It'll be a pretty quick pace from the start. Now onto the second lap. So your first and second lap should have about a two to three second differential between them. If your first lap is faster than your second lap, that's called a negative split, vice versa, that's called a positive split. If you go out hard and hold that effort the whole race, your body's gonna naturally run two to three seconds slower that second lap than your first lap. And this is a good indication that you kind of gave your max effort or ran to your potential that day. And if you're running a good 800, it's gonna hurt. It's usually gonna hurt from 200 to 300 meters in. It really depends on how the race plays out. So this second lap is when you're putting yourself in position to make a move. My coach would call it, you've got your one bullet, so use it wisely. So that whole first lap, that's why it's so important to conserve your energy, to not waste momentum, to be in good position to react to that move and then respond accordingly. As well, if you make a move, be decisive about it. If you decide to swing wide and pass somebody, swing wide and make that move. If you swing wide and then decide to not pass, you just wasted energy, you lost momentum, and ultimately that, that fatigue that's going to hit, that lactic acid is going to build much earlier because you wasted energy. The last 200 really guts. It's all you have, it's wanting it. With 100 to go, that's when the lactic is fully coursing through your body. A huge tip for me was instead of trying to fight that lactic acid, is just to think about my form, about staying relaxed and staying smooth. This would help me not break down and kind of collapse the last 100 meters. Finally, it takes experience. It takes going out and having bad race after bad race, where you go out too slow, you go out too fast, you make a dumb move, you get past late. 
It's failing forward, if that makes sense. Each 800 gave me something new to work on going into the next phase of training before we raced again. There really is no substitute for going out and racing, and that's why I'm a huge proponent of, of 800 guys in high school and college going to run an 800 and then going to run a 4x4. So you're still getting a workout, but you're getting race experience, and so it's kind of killing two birds with one stone. And to be honest, the 800 is a brutal event. You don't have time to think. It's either your day or it's not. You have to be willing and confident to treat it like it's a sprint and go for it to run that PR or dream race. It's super accomplishing, but equally as frustrating. So to all my high school and, and college runners, take some time to reflect and see how could you improve your 800? Is it your training? Is there a way you could be more consistent with how you approach your training program? Is it your mentality? Could you spend some time practicing positive self-talk and visualizing yourself going out and running that monster race? Or it could be racing. First, take some pressure off yourself. Next time you step up to that line at that race, just go out and compete. That's all you can control. The times or results will come if you go out and do that. That's all for today. Make sure to stay tuned for videos every single Friday. If you've not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do that. Drop a comment, like, stay tuned, and I'll see y'all next time.